Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U Online Instruction. Welcome to Module 2.3. And as you may recall, what we discussed in the last module was how you could take the standard Schrodinger equation and add these two terms. See one that kind of tells you how electrons leak out into the contacts and another which tells you how electrons come in from the contacts. And as I mentioned, the sigma kind of has two components, one from contact one, one from contact two. So there's a sigma one plus sigma two. S has a S1 plus S2. And what we discussed was how the rate at which electrons leak out is determined by this gamma, which is like h bar times the escape rate in the semi-classical picture. And that gamma is related to the imaginary part of sigma. And one important point I made was that based on the requirement that whatever we are doing should give us the correct equilibrium values, equilibrium results that we know, the source term must be related to that escape rate by a relation like this. Okay. Now, if we did this with matrices, what would happen is that this psi here would be a column vector, this epsilon here would be a matrix H, The sigma here would be a matrix again. And that S would be a column vector. You see? That's it. Okay? And the relations that I wrote here would also be kind of similar. You see, you could go through the arguments and you'd see that instead of I sigma minus sigma star, what you'd get is I sigma, this is now a matrix, and what you subtract from it is sigma dagger. It's that quantity, and we'll give that, that's still a matrix, which we'll call gamma. So instead of numbers, we now have matrices. Of course, physically though, it is still about the same thing. You know, just as this gamma is really about how easily things escape, about escape rates, it's that one. And similarly, the strength of this source term, you'll see, is also, you'll find is related to the gamma. So it would have something like S1. S1 is now a column vector. So when you take S1 multiplied by S1 dagger, that will give you a matrix and what you'd say, and that matrix will be gamma times F over two pi. So these would be the relations that would again come out from the same kind of arguments if you did this with matrices. See what we did in the last module was use numbers to keep things clear because a number of course is kind of like a one by one matrix. And so the algebra looks a little simpler. But of course, when you're doing matrices, you have to be careful about different things. And some of this, I think, will get a little clearer also in the next module when we talk about the how you calculate currents. We'll get to that in a minute. But the point I wanted to make first is that when you are modifying the Schrodinger equation to include this outflow and the inflow, the outflow into the contacts and the inflow from the contacts, See, you have to add these two terms. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, the formal way of doing it would be take the Schrodinger equation for the whole thing, impose open boundary conditions at the two contacts, and assume that you have a certain incoming wave from the contacts. And then after some algebra, you would actually end up with a net Schrodinger equation looking like this, just for the channel region. But what I'm here, I'm trying to do is give you a more informal but heuristic view of how these terms come about. Yeah. Now the important point though you might ask is, well, let's say we have this Schrodinger equation. Why couldn't we use this to analyze devices directly? Why do we need these 
NEGF equations, which is what I'll be talking about next, you know, which is what were, what are actually used to analyze devices. And the argument is, as I kind of explained at the end of the last module, that when you have two sources, in the semi-classical picture, if you had an S1 and an S2, you could just add them. Here we have this complex number, and if we just add S1 plus S2, and then multiply it by its complex conjugate to obtain the number of electrons, you'd get the correct answer plus a part that should not be there, what I call these cross terms, because, as I said, Normal electrons in normal devices are sort of like thermal photons, where there is no coherence between two sources. So if you have a cross term like this between two sources, the phase of that is completely random. And here we are talking about measuring, you know, steady state current, you know, averaged over long times, you know, at least a nanosecond, perhaps much longer. And when you're looking at that current, you'll never see anything like this. You, what you'd be seeing would be things like this, the steady state current. And here also I should mention that there is a lot of work nowadays on noise measurements, which could allow you to see things like this. But that's a whole different story we are not getting into. Okay. Anyway, so the point is that when you are, in order to look at things like this, what we need is an equation that would be directly in terms of psi psi star, see, rather than the Schrodinger equation. And that's what I'll obtain next. So the way I'll, we, do, we could do this is, let's first write an expression for psi from here. That is, what I could do is, you see, E is a number. So just to make it also into a matrix, just like the other ones, I could write this as E times I. Okay, so where I is an identity matrix whose size is the same as the Hamiltonian matrix and you know that matrix also. So H, sigma, etc. So you could then write this as <coughs> EI minus H minus sigma multiply psi is equal to the source term S. So this then tells you the wave function inside the device in response to a given source term, okay? And you could invert that to write psi is equal to this EI minus H minus sigma inverse times S. So all I've done is, here's a matrix times psi equals S. So psi is equal to that matrix inverse times S. And this matrix is called the Green's function. Actually, there'll be another one that I'll be including, which is the non-equilibrium Green function, which gives the name NEGF to this whole method. The non But this one is, actually this one is called the retarded Green's function. This quantity, it's written as GR and and that retarded, you know, again, it's not meant to be an insult or anything. It's, it's got a scientific basis that I'm not going into. So there's this G with a R in, as a superscript, the retarded Green's function for the device. And so psi is equal to GR times S. That's the basic result. So what we have obtained here then is the first of our set of equations that we want to obtain. So that's the first one. The definition is this retarded Green's function is EI minus H minus sigma inverse. Actually, in the literature, that sigma would also be written with a superscript of R, but I left that out because there's no confusion with any other sigmas that we'll be using here. So I'll just call that sigma. Here I've kept it because we have already used G for conductance anyway, so we don't want to have any confusion with that. Okay. Anyway, so that's the first equation. Now what I want to explain is what the second equation is about. So the way you get the second equation would be something like this. You see psi is equal to gr times s. So let me write that here. 
Now what we want is an expression for psi psi dagger. And dagger means conjugate transpose. And I'll explain in a minute exactly what this looks like, how you interpret the different terms here. But basically it is the matrix version of psi psi star. You know, when we did the one level thing, I said, well, you can take psi, take it, multiply it by conjugate, and it will give you this number of electrons. Well, the matrix version of that is this one. And I'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, let's get the algebraic expression. The point is the psi is gr times s. And now we need psi dagger. That is the conjugate transpose of this. And that's where when you have a product of two things and you take the conjugate transpose of the whole thing, what you have is you have the conjugate transpose of S, but that kind of comes in front. See, so psi is equal to say A times B, and I want the conjugate transpose of A times B. The thing is the answer is B dagger A dagger. So it's S goes dagger, and then I need the conjugate transpose of the retarded Green's function, which is usually written as a advanced Green's function. As I said, I was not going into the scientific reasons why the, those words are used, retarded and advanced, but the main point to remember here is, this is actually just the conjugate transpose of that one. So if you knew this, you could write that too. Okay. Now if you use that and go back to the original equation, then I could put here, S dagger and then G A. So basically then if psi is equal to this retarded Green's functions times the source term, then you could write psi psi dagger as this. Okay. And as I mentioned earlier, that quantity psi psi dagger is like electron density and exactly what we'll talk about in a minute. But this is what in the non-equilibrium Green's function method is referred to as G n. Actually in the standard literature, often this is the quantity that is written as minus i times g less. So you'll often see if you're following the literature on NEGF, you'll often see that symbol. But when multiplied by minus i, the quantity you get, that is much like the number of electrons, which is why we have given it this name G n g super n, and that is like this, that is basically this psi psi dagger, except that it's multiplied by 2 pi. So what I mean by that is, the psi psi dagger is the matrix g n divided by 2 pi. And this is, as I said, the matrix version of the number of electrons, and I'll explain what, we'll talk a little more about this in a minute. Okay. Now similarly here, this is the term that tells you the strength of the source. You know, what in the simple one, one level model would have been just S S star. You see the complex quantity whose <coughs> magnitude square gives you the strength. And this is what is written as sigma in. In meaning, this is the, what defines what is coming in from the contacts, sigma n, again divided by 2 pi. And here again, if you are Reading the standard literature, this is what would have appeared as minus i sigma less. But if you haven't seen all that, don't worry about it. We'll just go with what we have here, and that's this. So overall then, as soon as you put these in, you'll get gn is equal to gr sigma n times ga. And that is the second equation that we were talking about. And together, these two constitute the system of equations used to analyze uh, nanoscale devices in the quantum regime. And this is what you might call the non-equilibrium green function, this Gn. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what I want to talk a little more about, okay, firstly, is about the strength of this sigma n that 
strength of the source that if you look back here, remember that in the one level thing, we had argued that the strength of the source would be gamma 1 f1 over 2 pi and the matrix version was something like this. S1, S1 dagger is gamma f over 2 pi and so what we defined as sigma n, that is like 2 pi SS star, SS dagger because as you remember, SS dagger is what we call sigma n over 2 pi. And so the sigma n is kind of like gamma times f. Now this is the point where I want to stress that you see the reason I argued we needed to get away from Schrodinger equation and instead use an equation like this was that if you use the Schrodinger equation and had two sources S1 and S2, you tend to be superposing the size from S1 and the S2. And then when you take psi psi star, you'd get all kinds of unphysical terms. On the other hand, when you use an equation like this and you have two sources, you can just superpose their SS daggers, you see? Because that is, that is then just superposing the psi psi stars. And so the sigma n, you see, if you had a single source, it would have depended on gamma f. If you have two sources, well, that's fine. It's just gamma 1 f1 plus gamma 2 f2 when you have two sources, that's it. You know, that, that's like having a S1, S1 dagger, and then a, another S2, S2 dagger. So that's the nice thing about the NEGF equations is, when you have multiple sources, you can just superpose them and add them up. That is what you could not have done if you're working with the Schrodinger equation. And so you'd have to, have to be personally in charge of making sure you are calculating all the psi psi stars due to one source first and then due to another and then adding them and you have, you have to want you have to make sure you're doing it right but as here you see it's automatically taken care of in this formalism so for this module then let me just say one more thing and we can finish up and that is about this gn what it looks like as i mentioned this gn is like the matrix version of the number of electrons. Now what does psi look like? Well, it's a column vector. It's the wave function at point for corresponding to point one, wave function corresponding to point two, etc., up to say n points, you know, whatever the number of points in your channel. And when you like psi dagger, that's like conjugate transpose of this, which means instead of being a column vector, it's a row vector that looks like this. Okay. And just for this discussion, instead of taking a long thing, let's just take something with just two points. You know, that way you can easily see what you get. So you got two points here and two things here, but when you multiply them, you see this is two by one, this is one by two. So when you multiply these two things, what you get is a two by two matrix. See? And that matrix would look something like this. Psi 1, Psi 1 star, Psi 2, Psi 2 star, and this point would be Psi 2, Psi 1 star, while that point would be Psi 1, Psi 2 star. So this is the matrix as it would look like if you had two points. And you see that first thing you could interpret as, you know, wave function squared at point one, number of electrons at point one. This would be like number of electrons at point two. And then of course you have these off diagonal terms which don't have a simple interpretation. It is about the phase relationships between one and two and so on. They lead to all kinds of measurable effects, but that needs more discussion. So the thing is, if you just want the number of electrons, you look at what's on the diagonal. What would you do if you wanted the total number of electrons? Well, you just add up what's on the diagonals. And when you add up what's on the diagonals, there's actually a technical name for that. It's called taking the trace of a matrix. A trace of a matrix is, takes the sum of all the diagonal elements. So what that means is, if you wanted the trace 
uh, wanted the total number of electrons, what you do is take the trace of Gn. And of course, you have to re remember to divide it by 2 pi just because of the way things are defined. The Gn is not really psi psi dagger, but it's 2 pi times that. But the thing is, it's this trace. Okay. So that then covers these first two equations. And what I'll try to explain then is another two equations that are related, which you need in order to use them to calculate currents and all that. And that's what we'll get to in the next module.